For as long as I can remember, my family ran what we called a horror caravan. We hauled this house of horrors around from town to town, trying to give people a new thrill, a new nightmare. I kind of like traveling, but all that gruesome gore got to me after a while. My dad was always conjuring up new devices, tricks, and traps, each one scarier than the last. <laughs> Guess who he tried them out on? Yep, me. No! No! I guess it toughened me up a little. I mean, you have to be brave to walk through a den of snakes or try to avoid trap doors to make it to your room. I was a pretty fearless kid by the time I was five, thanks to my fearsome father. He fed on others' fears and was never satisfied. My mom couldn't stand how obsessed he'd gotten, so she thankfully divorced him when I was six. Yet I had gotten attached to horror. I remember how that good old Halloween pillow and a hot red water bath soothed me. I think I might major in child psychology. So, how'd I do? That was great! I mean, you're the head of the Horror Research Club and... President of the Student Council! It's a given! You win this speech contest for sure! What, Michelle? Why didn't you listen to Erico's speech? I don't need to. I know she'll win. Here, take a look at this. Those are guest invitations to Illbleed. How'd you get them? From a Pepco promotion. Cool! Look, we can win a hundred million bucks there. Yeah, if we can manage to get through the whole park, that is. No sweat. I'm game if you are. Sure thing, I'm with ya! Whoa, whoa. <coughs> what about you, Erico? I think I'll pass. It sounds too good to be true. Why? You just said in your speech to conquer your fear and surpass the odds. Come on, we can test your theory. Sounds like we're trying to be superheroes or something. It's no biggie. It's just a house of horrors. Probably full of cheesy props and gags. Which proves what's so weird about this. How can a funky place like that afford a hundred million dollar reward? Who knows? Maybe they'll make it take so long to get through it, everyone will give up, go home, and the horror honchos will end up with a lot of free publicity. Or else the whole thing is a hoax, and they don't have the money at all. I agree with him. I'm down with that. I'm not voting. Or going. For real? Are you positive? You sure? Yep, you heard me. Okay, your highness. Then we three humble slaves shall bring back the 100 million dollars and you'll be sorry. I can't wait to commune with the undead. I'd use the money for a chainsaw and hack my way into fame and fear. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, brother. Okay then. We'll catch you later, Erico. Let's go!
Excuse me. Did you see three high school kids around here three days ago? They had special invites. What? <laughs> come true. Neither did Jimmy or his father, Gail Banbalo, a Minnesota innkeeper. He set up a secret baseball practice arena in the basement of his inn, where he and his son practiced day after day. Jimmy's hard work and batting skills finally led his team to a state victory. It started out a crisp spring day, but before Jimmy could go outside to play, he and his dad went downstairs to bat the ball around a few times. Upstairs, some teenagers had been playing with fire, turning the inn into a raging blaze that was soon out of control. The inn was a total loss, and so was Jimmy, burned in minutes. Mr. Banbala was so badly named, he turned into a hideous monster, oozing and bleeding, snarling and growling like a beast, enraged and bent on revenge. He tracked down the kids responsible for the fire and killed them one by one with a blowtorch. That wasn't enough for Bambalo. He won't leave his inn or his memories, so there he waits, in ambush.